a year and a half ago, I had zero CNC machines. Now I have one that prints plastic, one that engraves and cuts plastic, a bigger one that engraves and cuts plastic, one that cuts wood, and one that cuts sheet metal. But it'd be nice to have one more. I've been casually shopping for a CNC milling machine for about a year. Post-pandemic prices have been kind of crazy, just like everything else. Also, I've owned a lot of CNC machines, probably over 20. So I'm kind of picky about what I want. But I think I finally found one. It's three hours away, so I don't have time to go check it out. And the price is right. So if we don't move quickly, it's going to be gone. I think I can haul it, but I got a little problem with my trailer. So let's take care of that and get moving. This is the dust cap off of this wheel. And there's a rubber plug in the middle and it's got a hole in it. I don't know, it doesn't sound the greatest. <laughs> I guess we better get it apart and see, uh, see what's going on. The wheel seal's been leaking just a little bit. I don't know if I have a new one or not. Okay, clean things up and put it back together. I thought it sounded a little crunchy and sure enough, if the camera will focus, we have some damage to the outer bearing race. So that needs to be replaced for sure. The inner bearing race, I don't see any problems with that. The bearings themselves, I think are okay. But my local auto parts store had both bearings and races in stock. So we're gonna just replace both of them. They're not that expensive. These are Chinese bearings. We're gonna replace them with some nationals made in Thailand, like all the best bearings. This is not the right seal though. So gotta wait till tomorrow for that. I'm gonna go ahead and put together what I can put together. And this is some rough, rough machining in here. I think these are Dexter axles, but their quality has gone way downhill, at least in my opinion. Problem is they bought out pretty much every other axle manufacturer. So it's kind of the only thing you can get anymore. This side's a little better. They must have must have sharpened the boring tool. Of course, the funny part here is that you got to press the bearing in about that far because the dust cap diameter is the same as the bearing diameter. There it is. All right, we got the right seal. So let's put this thing back together. This is a bearing packer. Very handy little tool. Like that. 
that. Jam that thing full of grease. Brakes look really good. I don't think this trailer has a lot of miles on it. We'll do the highly technical torquing process. huge fan of that clip design but it does work put some grease inside the cap because why not and then I've got a new little rubber cap I don't know what the purpose of that is I don't know if it's designed to let it breathe a little bit so it doesn't build up pressure inside or I don't know that'll work sounds much better I had one bad bulb otherwise the lights all work That was a little bit more involved than I thought we were going to get, but I'm glad I checked it. Finding a bad bearing in the shop is a lot better than finding it on the side of the road. So we're going to hitch up and get moving. The machinery trip has turned into a family trip. Kiddo, where are we? The lock is there! pretending to be asleep. His eyes are open right now. Oh, now they're closed. There's my new baby, loaded up, ready to travel. Pretty much used every strap I've got. Three hours to home, shouldn't be a problem. We're on the way home. Okay, we're about halfway back. Everything looks good, nice and tight. Table hasn't moved. Control pendant looks okay. Yeah, we're good. 
We had exactly the kind of trip you want to have. Uneventful. I think the guys I bought this from kind of laughed at the number of straps I put on it, but the more the better, as far as I'm concerned. Nobody's ever had something go wrong and thought, I wish I hadn't put so many chains on that. It's a pain on these machine tools too. There's usually nothing to chain down to. This machine had one hole through the casting I could run the chains through. There's nothing on that end. I wish I had some chains with grab hooks so I could hook around the web of that casting. That would have worked pretty well. What you don't want to do is throw your chains around the leveling screws. I've been, I've been screwed by that before. Truck drivers throw their chains over those and screw up all the threads. Then you're laying on your back on the concrete in the Houston heat with a thread file for about two whole days. Not that I would know personally. Anyway, yeah, people make a big deal about moving machine tools. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, you hear things on the internet about how you have to have air ride trailers and you got to build a crate and I mean, you don't even want to know what happens to these things before they get to your door. This machine was built in Taiwan, shipped to the port, came across an ocean, shipped from the port to the dealer, reassembled, shipped from there to at least three shops before it got here. So, it ain't her first rodeo. If it can't survive a road trip, it can't survive machining. Anyway, I'm gonna get it unstrapped and we're gonna see if my forklift can lift it. I don't know if it can, but I wanna try. If it can't do it, we'll call in the professionals. Forks are sticking through by about that far. I can't stress this enough. Do not try this at home. I have your phone. I don't have mine, so if I need to call 911, I need to be ready. Thank you. 
What a cute little machine. This is a Herco VM1 3-axis CNC milling machine. And if that sounds like gibberish to you, it's a robot that cuts metal. It's basically a computer controlled version of that machine back there. This thing came out of a tool and die shop. I think it's been rode hard and put away wet. Looks like it cut a lot of tool steel. Probably some other really nasty stuff. They forgot to check the hours before they powered it off. So don't know how many hours are on it. I've never actually seen it run. I did see a short video clip of it doing a tool change, but I haven't heard the spindle. I really don't know what we're gonna get here. This is, this is a gamble. The machine was cheap and I'm guessing I got what I paid for. The control panel, pretty shabby. Looks like we got some tape over some cracks here. Some of the membrane keys are missing. That button's broken. So, yeah, needs a little work. Control cabinet looks pretty decent. The drives and servo motors are all Yaskawa, made in Japan. I believe they are the number one or number two motion control robotics company in the world. Their robots are called Moto Man. Yeah, this is the older Ultimax control. I believe it's still DOS based. Don't quote me on that. It's not the, the WinMax control. Those are a couple of years newer which is kind of a bummer, but again, the price was right. Anyway, I've got some temporary power hooked up. I think, uh, I think we better throw the switch and see what happens. Okay. Here goes nothing. So far, so good. Not sure what that means. Guess we'll wait. Kind of forgot how slow computers were 20 years ago. All right. I've actually uh, never used a Herco CNC control before. So, I wonder how we're supposed to do this. I'm gonna say we go to manual. Okay. It says e-stop has been depressed. Okay. Press manual mode, power, and start cycle to restore power. So, manual. <laughs> there we go. Servo power is off. Uh, let's see. Reset servos and spindle. Okay, I had to push the cycle start button to turn the servos on. I think we can... We should be able to move the machine around, shouldn't we? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Here we go. All right, good. Z-axis goes first. That's what we want to see. Okay. So it's gonna move the table until it hits the limit switch or the home switch. Then it goes to the index pulse on the encoder. And then it probably comes back to its park position, I'm hoping. 
maybe not. Now it wants to do the tool changer. I think I figured it out. So we need to go to X and then push times 100. And then we want to go positive. Like so, and we'll go to Y. Okay, Z. Ooh, that's interesting. It will not let you do times 100 in the z-axis. I don't know, does it have continuous jog? Okay, yes it does have continuous jog. That's these buttons here. Okay. Not sure how to fire up the spindle. I don't know if there's an MDI mode. I think I might have it. So if we go down. Now we can put in, uh, let's say, 500. Uh, clear. 500. Enter. Okay, then spindle on. And then I have to hit cycle start. Probably. Uh, there we go. Sounds pretty good. Let her warm up for a minute. All right, let's go for the big one. 8,000. Sounds good. Sounds really good. Cool. I gotta study the tool changer and figure out how that works, but so far so good. Well, I can't get the tool changer to work, so it should do a tool change. So it wants me to put tool one in the spindle, but if I push the unclamp button, it's gonna, it's gonna freak out. And it says, spindle clamp and unclamp inputs detected. So there must be, uh, I don't know, an adjustment required on a proximity switch or a pressure switch. Not sure. Because it does, if I go in here to the diagnostic page and I go to that works just fine. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I do have good news. Check this out. If we go to uh, system configuration and we go to display machine specifics, look at that. Zero hours. Yeah. Looks brand new to me. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to stop here. I think we're in pretty good shape. My bargain machine does work, but it also needs some work, which is not surprising. We'll have to tear into the tool changer. The automatic tool changer is the most complicated part of a CNC machine, and that typically means it's the least reliable part, but I don't think it's anything major. I need to get the machine in a permanent place, wired up, leveled, and then we can kind of figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things going on in the shop right now. So, might be a little while before we get that done. Of course, the real money pit with a CNC machine is not the machine, it's the tooling. There's two six inch vices and a bunch of pull studs and tool holders. Unfortunately, I must have fat fingered my order and I got a bunch of ER25 collet holders instead of ER32 so 
I'll have to spend about a hundred bucks on shipping to send that back, but no big deal. That's it. I want to say thanks to the folks who support me on Patreon. They make impulse purchasing a clapped out 7,000 pound CNC machine a lot less financially precarious. Thanks everybody for watching and hopefully I'll see you back here for part two, which is coming soon. Did you print shoes? <laughs> Can I print the shoe? We might use it for that. What is it gonna make? I don't know. I got your machine running. Oh, it's my machine now. It's my machine actually. Oh, did you like it? Obviously this is a serious work environment.